Hi, I'm Davin from Brewbits.com. Behind the camera we've got James. Say hello James. Right, today we're going to be brewing some Bramble wine, also known as Blackberry wine. Um, this summer has been absolutely fantastic. We're right now at the beginning of September and I went out yesterday and picked a big load of blackberries um, and I couldn't help myself, I picked almost four pound of blackberries and I've got three pound here ready for us to make six bottles of wine with. The other has, uh, the other pound is gone into the freezer so that I can make myself some apple and blackberry crumbles when I'm ready. So, what are we going to need to be able to make bramble or blackberry wine? So, first of all, come on James, have a quick look in here. There's three pounds of plump, juicy blackberries. We have got three pound of brewing sugar. We also need a straining bag, spoon, thermometer, hydrometer and a trial jar. And we'll get to what we're going to use those for later. Uh, we've got a simple siphon. We need some steriliser, we need some peptic enzyme, some yeast, some yeast nutrient, some camdum tablets. We need this lovely beauty which is called a demijohn. And we also need a bubbler with a rubber bump. And we'll also need a jug to help us out along the way. One of the biggest things we need to do when we're brewing is to be clean. We need to make sure everything is clean. Now, I know all this is clean, but it all still needs sterilizing. So to sterilize it, what I've made up is I've made up one teaspoon of sodium metabisulfate, and in there is some hot water. So I'm gonna go and sterilize all of this now because it's uh, quite a boring job. And uh, once I've sterilized it all, We'll come back and we'll actually show you what we need to do to get brewing. So, why don't you go and take a few moments to look at some pictures of butterflies on brambles. Right then, I hope you had some nice pretty shots there of butterflies. I'm just uh, finishing off cleansing. I've covered basically everything in sodium metabisulfate and I'm just rinsing it all off in cold tap water just to make sure we've got rid of all the nasties. So, what we're going to do now is, quite simply, this is the really nice easy bit, we're going to take our blackberries and we're going to put them, all three pounds of them, into our bucket. Look at that juice, come on. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're now going to top up our bucket with six pints of boiled water. So, literally just off the boiled water. So we've got one, and we're going to pour it straight over the top. Be careful that you don't splash yourself because obviously it is boiling water. Three. Okay, now I'm going to put the kettle back on because um, I need to get three more points of boiling water. Uh, so I'm going to have myself a quick sip and uh, then I'm going to get the kettle back on. So, more pictures of butterflies on brambles. Right there. Okay. That's the kettle boiled for the second time, so we'll put another three pints in. Number six. Right, don't get yourself steamed up, James. Right, probably is a good time to tell you that I have already washed the blackberries before I even put them in here. So, <laughs> right, so let's give this a quick little stir. Nothing much going on at the moment. It's basically blackberry flavoured water. Now we're going to add in gently our three pounds of brewing sugar. All lovely in there. And now this is going to take a bit of time. We just need to gently keep stirring this until all that sugar, all the grittiness from the sugar disappears. We need to get all this sugar dissolved. Once we've got all the sugar dissolved, we're then going to leave it to pretty much cool down um, till about 20 degrees. It's taken about an hour, uh, but the must has cooled right down. All our sugar is dissolved. Uh, so now we've got the next stage is to add a couple of Im uh, chemical and an improver. So let's first of all talk about the chemical we're going to add. 
we're going to be adding something called a Camden tablet. Now a Camden tablet is a small uh, little white pill, almost looks like a paracetamol. Uh, not very big, and what we're going to do is we're going to crush that between two teaspoons. So, here you go James, put that one in the middle and we're going to press really hard in between them. It takes a bit of time and then eventually it will go. Okay, and you're left then with a simple powder. So we're now going to add that to our must. Oh, sorry if you don't like fingers down the chalkboard. Right, and we're going to stir that in. So, for those of you who don't know, a Camden tablet, what is it? Well, basically, when a wine starts, or a beer, or anything like that in that matter, starts to ferment, it starts giving off carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide then starts building up in your bucket, which prevents any bugs, any bacteria getting in, because as soon as they get into the carbon dioxide, they just die off. Well, at this stage, we haven't put any yeast in. We're not going to put any yeast in quite yet. Um, so our must is at possible that it's prone to attack from all these uh, bugs, bacteria, etc. So what that Camden tablet's going to do is going to let off a small amount of sulfur dioxide. And with that, it's going to create, because the sulfur dioxide is heavier than air, it's going to create a barrier in the bucket. So none of those bacteria can get into our must and destroy it at this point in time. Okay? So that's our Camden tablet. And the second ingredient we're going to add is an ingredient called Pectolase. Pectolase is a powder, very fine powder. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to add one whole teaspoon of Pectolase to our must. Okay, so what's Pectolase? Um, when you heat fruit, like we've done by adding the six points, pints of boiling water, um, it can release pectin. Now, pectin doesn't sound that harmful. It isn't. But what it causes is when you come to bottle your wine, um, or even then unbottle your wine and start drinking it, you might find that there's a haze. And that haze can be caused by pectin. So what our pectolase does is it basically breaks down the pectin so that, that pectin haze cannot form at a later time. So, once we've added our Camden tablet and our pectolase, what we're going to do is we're going to put our lid on. And we're now going to put it somewhere warm, so in my boiler room, uh, for about 24 hours. Welcome back. 24 hours later, I've removed the uh, must from the boiler room. And what I've done is I've already taken the privilege of removing um, about 80 mil of this into our trial jar. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop now our hydrometer in and I'm gonna measure the specific gravity. It's coming out at 1.1. I'm going to keep a note of that in my diary for use a little bit later. So remember, that was 1.1 specific gravity. Next thing to do is add our yeast nutrient. Now the yeast nutrient I'm currently using here is in tablet form. And it's vitamin 1, sorry, vitamin B1 yeast nutrient. And just like we did with the Camden tablet, I'm going to take two tablets, I'm going to pop them onto my teaspoon, Back up to me, James. And I'm gonna crush them in. There we go. So they're nicely crushed. And then put that into our mustard as well. Make sure that all goes through. Okay, I'm now gonna add our yeast. So our yeast, I'm gonna use one teaspoonful of yeast. And I'm gonna sprinkle it on. And we're gonna give this a good stir. Make sure it's all stirred in properly. And once it's all stirred in properly, then we'll leave it for 24 hours. So let's give it a good stir in now. See all the loveliness going on in there. And this needs to be stirred every 24 hours 
for the next seven days. So it needs to go into back into the boiler room so that it's sitting at about 20 degrees. It's been 24 hours since we put the bramble wine in the bucket. So let's have a look and see how it's doing. It's bubbling away quite nicely, so give us a stir. Lovely. And now let's leave it for another 24 hours. 48 hours after we added the yeast, let's have a look to see how the blackberry wine's getting on. Okay, it's fizzed up nicely, so let's give it a good stir. Now it's come back in 24 hours. Hi, day three. Let's have a look how our bramble wine's coming. Back again in 24 hours. It's four days since we added the yeast to our blackberry wine, so let's have a look how it's going. Lovely, it's going really well still. Let's give it a good more stirring. Nice and beautiful. Let's leave it another 24 hours. Okay, day five. The bramble wine is still fizzing away, so let's give it another good stir. See you in 24. So it's day six, and the blackberry wine is still fizzing away. Really going for it still. Let's leave it for another 24 hours. Okay, it's day seven, so let's have a look at our bramble wine. It's going absolutely lovely, so let's give it its final stir. It's slowed right down now, as you can see. So what we're doing is it's time to take the wine and siphon off all of the blackberries. So what I'm gonna do, into a sterilized bucket with a sterilized um, piece of muslin or a straining bag, I'm gonna pop that over the top of our bucket. Now, little tip, I use three little bulldog clips just to hold it in place. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna very gently, because blackberry wine stains quite badly, just gonna gently pour it into our straining bag. Come and have a look at this, James. Don't get any splashed on the camera, try not to. And most of the fluid straining straight through. Okay. Right, I'm gonna leave that now for probably the next 10 minutes or so, just to finish off dripping through so I make sure I get all the goodness, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna take the wine and we're gonna put that into a demi job. Now we've strained off our blackberries, we're left with a wine that's a deep, dark, ruby red. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna siphon that off into a sterilized demi job. Now here I'm using a glass one, uh, but you can get plastic ones as well. So we're going to do a little bit of fun bit. Basically give it a good suck, get the siphoning going, and we're going to be taking it up to about here in the demijohn, uh, just at the bottom of the neck. It's going to take a few moments to do that, so why don't you come back in a few moments when it's got to that point, and then we'll show you what we're going to be doing with a bubbler. Eventually we've finished topping up our demijohn just to the neck, bottom of the neck. And what we're going to use now is we're going to be putting in a bubbler with a rubber bum. And within the bubbler, James comes in and has a look at this, you'll see that I've put a fluid in the bottom. Now this is sodium metabisulfate solution, which is what we use to sterilise everything. And all we're going to simply do is pop that in the top, make sure we've got a good seal. Now we're going to put this back somewhere warm, probably for the next couple of weeks. And in that time it will ferment to what we call dryness. Now that simply means basically using up all the sugar and so when you actually see these bubbles stop, because this is still fermenting at the moment, you'll gradually start seeing bubbles coming through here. And once that stops, you'll know that your wine is fermented to dryness. If you want to double check that, take your hydrometer, put it in your trial jar, and you should come out with a reading exactly of one or just slightly below it. That tells you then all the sugar's been used up and then it's ready for racking and bottling. So, see our other videos of how to rack and bottle, and we should be able to be drinking this, hopefully, uh, or bottling it, I should say, hopefully in about 
two weeks to a month, depending on how quickly it clears, and then into bottles for about six months, and then we could be drinking lovely bramble wine in the spring.